state and local law enforcement. They're the eyes and ears on the ground. They know where the brothels are. They know where the factories are. They know the houses where there's a lot of 911 calls, and they're in a position to see some of the first red warning flags. The police came to the house a few times to ask me if I was okay, and I said, yeah. And the man was next to the door, close to me. The police just left. The times that they came, that's what they did. They just look and left. They have to understand what it is in order to be able to see it. And then what they need to do is they need to look at what we call indicators of possible trafficking cases. We always look down. We never look at the people in their face. We always we afraid of other people to know our situation. We avoid questions. If you never see them outside, but you know they're there, that's an indicator that you might have some. Another indicator is controlled communication to their home country. Controlled movement. They never separate, they always stay together. Look at the security. If the barbed wire is pointing in, that means it's meant to keep people in, not to let them out. If there's a gut feeling that somebody's controlling this person or uh, scripting their answers, it's worth following up on. Some of our biggest success stories have involved police officers on the front line saying something's wrong with this picture. How old are you, Carla? 18. What's your date of birth? International organized crime, of course, that's what people expect to find in this, and they are in, involved in this. But the bulk of what we're seeing is loosely based family organizations. Often you'll have a recruiter or two or three recruiters in the home country from that family who are pitching this dream of a better life to the victims. Other people will facilitate their illegal entry, and then you'll get the people who are making the money off of them by abusing them, forcing them into prostitution, holding them against their will. We have a security guard who was watching us 24 hours a day. I had to work 17 hours a day, and I had 10 minutes to eat meal, beans and, beans and rice. Then I had to live inside. One day I was cleaning, and she started yelling at me and pulled the Windex away from me and sprayed it on my face. And so anything she had on her hand, she would use it at me. I was just hoping that one day it will stop. We cannot treat these people as criminals due to their immigration status. We have to treat them as victims. The Trafficking Victims Protection Act of 2000 has three main goals, prevention, protection, and prosecution. With an adult, you have to show force, fraud, or coercion. For minors, in commercial sexual activity, we no longer need to prove force, fraud, or coercion. Any child under the age of 18 that has been involved in a commercial sex act is found to be a victim of severe, severe form of trafficking automatically. We're starting to see a lot of states enact anti-trafficking legislation. You need to make sure that you know the laws in your area. Trafficking involves a whole host of crimes kidnappings, murders, rapes, assaults, uh, money laundering, immigration violations. Any of these can be used against the traffickers. My partner and I got a call of a assault situation at a restaurant. We soon discovered that there was a, a 10 to a dozen Chinese immigrants that were being forced to work at this restaurant. And that's when we called in INS. Once INS was on board, it just opened up the, the case, you know, tenfold. We started discovering all these apartments where they were housing people, and uh, we were able to figure out who our suspect was. Our main goal is to attack these organizations. We can't effectively attack these organizations with just, you know, a handful of authorities, but we can get them with the combined authorities. Keisha Handy, the Victim Witness Coordinator for the United States Attorney's Office. Edwin Chaposo, Harris County Sheriff's Office. Suzanne Bradley, FBI. There's a role for every 
federal agency, every local law enforcement agency to play, and the success stories are the ones where all the different agencies have worked together. There's a whole host of, of social service needs that law enforcement cannot provide. Can I help you? Yes, I need to see Kate Buck. Okay, she's expecting you. She's in her office right down the hall. Our non-governmental organizations, our community-based organizations can help. It's really important for law enforcement agencies and officers to know that by getting non-governmental organizations involved right from the very beginning, that will help their case. Thanks for coming in. Absolutely. Good to see you. Part of our culture is, hey, stand to the side, ma'am. We can handle this. We can go it alone. We know that we will not be effective if we have that kind of attitude. We're going to have to learn to bring in community partners that are really experts in this work. Victims almost always come to us with nothing but their clothes on their back. They need food and shelter. Um, they need a lot of medical attention. We're not here to disrupt the investigation. We really want the same thing and that is to put the trafficker behind bars and to help this victim lead a normal life again. There has to be a mutual respect for, for this local mission and the state mission, the federal mission, uh, at every level. That's why we have a Harris County Sheriff's deputy assigned to the FBI right now, working in FBI space. Hey, Ed, when you got a chance, you can come over here. What you got? When an officer at roll call gets a sheet of paper saying, hey, if you come upon a scene and you think there may be a human trafficking issue, here's your contact. If the U.S. Attorney's Office is asking, I think we may get a quicker response. Local law enforcement are the eyes and ears that are on the ground. They protect and serve, and they run into much more people than we do uh, on a daily basis. So they also, in turn, receive much more information. Go out now into your community, find out who can house people, find out who can feed people, find out who can interpret for you. Um, you know, set up everything in advance because you may not have a case right now, but you're going to. Who do you need to call an FBI agency? Who do you need to call at the ICE agency? Who do you need to call the Department of Justice, your assistant U.S. attorney? Have those phone numbers at hand. Police officers can't do this work alone. We're going to have to learn how to trust, how to be open, how to share. We really need to come together so we can expose this dark secret that's occurring throughout the nation.